Have you ever felt tempted to experiment with the form of how a play moves? Not if it, it goes against the heart of a play, which is action. Uh, plays right. are all about action, as David Mamet always points out. And he's right. Um, there are some things you, you, you can't fool around with with a play. There's some things, of course, you can. There are no rules. There are principles. I'm shrinking through the floor at this moment because I didn't write a play, but I wrote a, you know, I wrote a thing about my family in the First World right. War, and you say a plays are all about action, and now I sink through the floor. There was zero action, almost zero action in the piece I wrote. Yeah. And I thought if I went back to rewrite that, I have to find some ways to put motion or yeah. action in that play. I, when I talk to young playwrights, I always say, go down, go down and see uh, Gary Glenn Ross. Study that play, just that one play, and you'll understand what playwriting is all about. It's got everything. It's even got the, the fact that they have to do it quickly. The, the action has to be right. a couple of days. And everybody's desperate in that play. Everybody has a tremendous motivation, a life and death situation. It has to be life and death, metaphorically or literally, in a play. Or else, it, or else why would people sit there in this theater, or any theater, 50 seats, 2,000 seats, and watch people on a stage if it isn't life and death. Why would they do that? I wouldn't. Nothing bores me more than watching people who aren't motivated strongly enough to hold an audience. You have, you have to compel the audience to sit there. And they pay good money to, to watch us. And you mean life and death physically, life and death emotionally, life and death yeah, spiritually, uh, yeah. life and death identity-wise? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I wish I'd heard that phrase before I directed some of your plays because, I mean, I, f I see those eventually in the plays as I directed them. But if I'd known that kind of key signature when I went in, I would have maybe got, to the, got further faster because Jacob Mercer is entirely a life and death character. He is. Right. Yes. Is well, that what makes the him... The other characters in, in Leaving Home, for example, have life and death situations. Literally or figurative, figuratively, you know? Um, yeah. And when did you realize that? That plays have to I, be about I, life I, and death? I realized that from studying plays. Ah, right. So a light boulevard comedy doesn't interest you? No, I mean, Jitters, no, I mean... No, no, no. Jitters is a... Is all life and... and uh, every every <coughs> character in that is motivated. It's a literal or metaphorical... Um, matter of life and death. Right. Let's go back to uh, leaving home mm -hmm. and let's talk a bit about the rehearsals and how you as a young writer watch these. But you had seen your television stuff done before. Did you sit in all the rehearsals with leaving home here? Every single day and I still, <laughs> I used to be a joke here <laughs> because <laughs> I uh, not only sat in, I, I still do it, even the Soul Pepper, I still sit in on every single rehearsal. But I sat in on every single rehearsal at, at the, in this theater. But not only that, I saw every goddamn production, every, every, every performance. I couldn't stay away. Why? I used to, well, I felt if I wasn't standing at the back of the theater watching it, it would disappear. That's, that's how I felt. What, the play would disappear yeah. or the actress would it, take it, it to place? It wouldn't exist if I wasn't there to see it. Is that ego or what? That's mysterious, <laughs> David. Yeah. <coughs> that's, how, that's how I felt. So I used, and then of course the actors knew that I was there all the time. And if I was sick or had the flu or something, they'd say, what? He doesn't like us anymore? So I had to be there. Even if I was sick, I had to show up. Because that can, it, sometimes it's difficult for actors to have the, the writer sitting there because you think, I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing it right. You, you can project criticism oh. into the writer's head. Yeah. No, you know, uh, when, when I, uh, be, before we start rehearsals with, with any show, I always tell the actors, look, I'm going to walk around. I'm, I'm not being rude. I'm going to, my back will be turned to you. I'll be, I may be listening for five, five or ten minutes. I said, I can tell more about the play, whether it's right or wrong, by listening to it rather than watching it. So don't think that I'm being rude to you guys. I'm trying to help rewrite the play. 
But I can't. I can tell much more by listening to it. Right. But say at Soul Pepper with uh, of the Field Slate or something, I you, still do it. you didn't you attended, but you didn't rewrite. Are you listening to no, the play no. or the production? Yeah, I'm just listening to what is it, maybe there's something that I can tell uh, Ted Dykstra uh, to help him as a director. I'm not going to rewrite the play. No, that play exists in a certain time and place, and I'm not going to rewrite it. No, I don't think it needs it. And let's go back to leaving home here, opening your first audiences. What was that like? Was it with other fields lately? No, uh, le leaving home. Leaving home. Well, the, the opening night of leaving home was sort of a legendary experience because um, I didn't invite my parents. I was a coward. I, <laughs> uh, I thought I'd hurt them too much, so I didn't invite them. So I came into the theater, opening night, I looked in, and there was two rows of my family sitting here. So I went backstage, and the fights were going on. We had the legendary fights going on during leaving home. Uh, you like know, what? Well, certain actors weren't getting along with certain other actors. As you know, Bob, <laughs> that ha often happens in the theater. And um, Was Sean we, Sullivan in it? Yeah, Sean Sullivan. See, Sean Sullivan ended up being the dark side of uh, Patrick Flanagan and Jitters. Right. And uh, Jerry Parks was the was the, 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 the rhythms of speech of Patrick Flanagan are Jerry Parks, but the dark side of that character is Sean Sullivan. Well, Sean you didn't get along well with Lisa Creighton, who played Minnie. So I go backstage opening night, 15 minutes before the curtain. I quit! I quit, she said. I quit. She grabbed up a fur coat, threw on her fur coat, and stormed out. And the stage manager chased her down <laughs> under the bridge and tackled, physically tackled her under the bridge, threw her over his shoulder, and brought her back kicking and screaming and sat her down in the chair in the, in the green room and said, you're going on. And that was it. So I'm watching. This is my first play. I'm watching this. This stuff happened. I was a, a wreck. <laughs> so we, and the play ends. The play ends, and there is absolute silence in the theater, and it goes on and on and on. And I thought, oh, geez, they they hate it. And all of a sudden, the entire theater leaped to its feet as one. Urge your creator once told me that it was one of the three spontaneous standing ovations he ever saw in the theater. We go back to Bill Glasgow's house for the party. Turn on the 11 o'clock news, and Jeanine Manatis was the critic at that time. Um, and she reviewed it for the CBC. She hated it. She panned it. She tore it to ribbons. That was the first review of Leaving Home. Um, and everybody in, the, in, the, uh, in Bill Velasco's house gave it a big raspberry, the review. And so I'm standing there in the house, waiting for Herbert Whittaker to show up, because I was told Somebody had told me this, that if Herbie liked the play, he was with a male critic, if he liked the play, he'd, he'd come to the party. But only if he liked the play, he would come to the party. So I'm standing in the, in the hall, looking at the front door, way, just wishing Herbie would walk through, willing him to walk through that door. And finally, the door opened, and in walked Herbert Whitaker. And so I knew I had a good review, and I did. Next day, it was a good review from Herbert Whitaker. But the next morning, the, the one review that I was terrified of about was Virgil Carreta. He could kill you with a word, with a word. Everybody knew that. So I was terrified of his review. So my wife and I got down to the Zumberger at St. George and Bluer, a little restaurant, bought a couple of newspapers, the Globe and Mail and the Star, and we went inside for a coffee. And we're sitting there facing each other. And I said, you read it. And I was, I was like this. She says, are you sure? I said, yeah, you read it. I can't read it. And so she opens. So we, we, didn't, we didn't go near the uh, Globe and Mail review first, because we, it was a good one anyway. We knew that. We went to the one that was going to destroy us. So she. Uh, 
opened up the paper, and she finally found the review, and I'm watching her face. And she starts to go white as that piece of paper there. She went pale, pale, pale. And then the tears started to stream down her face. And I said, God, is it that bad? She said, no, it's a, a rave. It's a rave. And Bob, my life just changed like that, just like that. My life was never the same afterwards. In terms of your career or in yeah. terms of what David French thought about his writing? At both. Right. Because within a year, there were about 35 productions of the play in Canada. Right. So in a Canadian theater sense, you rocketed to stardom. Yeah, well, the, that play opened up the, the gates to the regional theaters for Canadian plays. Right. It was astonishing what happened. Because up until then, it was all American and British yeah. imports, yeah. hits. But they suddenly realized that they could make money from a Canadian play. Right. And they started booking it. Here we're talking about success, and suddenly here's a play that'll move out, and here's a young writer who suddenly is being asked. But I also want to talk about the insecurity inside, because you talk of this insecurity that you have or had. So how do you deal with your own insecurity as you write, as you pace, as you watch, as you read the next review? I think my, I think my insecurity is the source of my creativity. I mean, I think it's a good thing. I, I'm glad I'm, I mean, I'm insecure. I don't want to ever be secure. Meaning if you were secure, you'd never write another play? I think so. I, 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 that's how I feel. I think it's, I think it's like the, you know, the uh, grain of sand inside the oyster. Right. It's the pearl. On the opening night of Leaving Home, did you sit in the audience or did you were in the foyer? <laughs> Nobody would sit with me. <laughs> so, so, uh, so Jane, nobody would sit with me. Why? But, well, because they, they were, they, I, I was a wreck. But Jane Glasgow finally said, I'll sit with you. So we sat down around here, somewhere around this, around this section here, and she held my hand. She said, I'll hold your hand. So she held my hand, and the lights, uh, the, the house lights went out, stage lights came on, and I started to faint. I said, Jane, Jane. I'm fainting," she said. "What, what, what do you what do you what do you mean?" I, I said, "I'm I'm seeing stars, Jane." <laughs> she said, "Bend over and put your head between your knees." <laughs> so I did. For about ten minutes, I sat there watching my well, not watching my play, listening to my play, with my head between my knees, and um, till uh, the stars went away. Then I sat up. And your family who were in the first two they rows? Loved it. They were there. They were there. Was you, were your mother and father there? Yeah, they were. And how did you deal with the fact that you thought you'd perhaps written them a bit too tough in the play and there they were watching well, themselves? They, gee, they surprised the hell out of me because they didn't think that my parents were the kind of people that didn't care what you said about them as long as it was true. So um, they loved the play. They were up till five or six o'clock in the morning arguing about it and discussing it. And they weren't put off by the play or hurt by the play at all. Did they see themselves in it? Oh, yeah. My father used to re refer to the Leaving Home as the play that you based on me. Remember that character you based on me? Wow. That's all. But one time, we were walking along Bluer Street, and he said to me, you know that play, Leaving Home? He said, that's about me and my father, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it is. Well, it was. It was about him and his father. It was about my father and me, too. It's about all fathers and sons. 